I was in acute and physical pain off the back of that game last night. I am terribly sorry that I didn't upload sooner, but I will be totally honest with you, I was cowardly. I couldn't face talking about that game last night, that embarrassment at Anfield, until now. The lack of fight in that Chelsea team was painful to watch. The lack of pride, the lack of desire, the lack of fight for the fans, the lack of ambition. Playing for Chelsea is an honour. Having that badge on your heart is something that should inspire. And these players look totally demotivated. It doesn't look like it matters them to them at all. And the fact that it has gone this way, from a personal perspective, genuinely feels punishing and truthfully really upsetting. It's just a pain. It, it, an actual acute pain to see Chelsea playing like this. We were thrashed, battered, embarrassed at Anfield. They were better than us in every possible metric. From the top down, they were better than us. And as football fans, this is very important. This is, I think, something that most football fans can relate to, but this is definitely true about Chelsea. We do not demand trophies. We do not demand success. Lots of Chelsea fans are of a generation where we know that Chelsea went 25 years without any silverware at all. Lots of Chelsea fans will remember a 50-year wait for a second title. We know who we are and there is only one thing that we demand and that is that the players fight. There are banners going back decades, back to the 80s, where there is a, a banner made that says fight like your fans, which isn't something that should be celebrated, but it is the thing that is demanded from Chelsea fans, that you fight, that you care, that it matters. And when you look at this Chelsea team, there are a couple of exceptions. But when you look at this Chelsea team, by and large, nobody cares. By and large, nobody's particularly bothered. And we are in a crisis. We are completely and utterly all over the place. And do you know what really did represent quite how bad it's gone for Chelsea? It was a sort of microcosm of how badly it's gone for Chelsea and how well it's gone for Liverpool. A symbolic substitution on 66 minutes. When Moises Caicedo was taken off playing for Chelsea at Anfield with his team 3-0 down. Doesn't that tell you everything? We won the war. Caicedo was Klopp's first target, the premier target. We won the war. Caicedo chooses Chelsea. Pictures of Caicedo in a Chelsea shirt when he was a kid. Chelsea splashing the cash, demanding that Brighton sell their prized asset to us. What due diligence was done there? Did, did we get one over on Liverpool or did Liverpool dodge a bullet? Yet again, the way that they pulled our pants down with regards to Fernando Torres. Is it that again? You know, we had two midfielders on the pitch yesterday. Two midfielders who cost a combined total of a quarter of a billion pounds. And they were totally overrun. They were totally outclassed. They were totally outfought. They were totally bullied. They were lightweight. There is some sort of schadenfreude that I can find because I detest our board so much in the fact that Moises Caicedo, signed for well over 100 million quid, and Enzo Fernandez, signed for well over 100 million quid, cannot play together. You utter idiots. You sign players who cannot play together. There is no yin and yang to their performances. How good is Enzo Fernandez really? How good is Moises Caicedo really? For you to go and spend over 100, billion, 100 million quid on each of them. It's laughable if it wasn't so painful. And he's now got to the stage where I don't really know who we are anymore at Chelsea. I honestly don't. Like, who are Chelsea? Really? You know, you know, if I asked you who Chelsea were under Mourinho, you could answer the question, couldn't you? Who are Chelsea? You'd start talking about the spine. Check Terry, Lampard, Drogba. If I asked you who Chelsea were under Antonio Conte, you'd know exactly who the answer, who the, what the answer was. We're a team built on wing backs. You talk about Alonso. You talk about uh, Moises Caicedo. Uh, sorry, you talk about Victor Moses. You talk about the identity of the team because it was there for all to see. Carlo Ancelotti's double winners. You'll start talking about the brilliance of Joe Cole or Florian Maluda. There is an identity to the way that we played. Who are Chelsea now? Who are Chelsea? At the moment, under Pochettino, Chelsea's Chelsea today, Pochettino's Chelsea. I don't really know. In fact, let's conduct an experiment. I ask you, in the comments below, tell me, who are Chelsea under Pochettino? How do we play? 
I have absolutely no idea. We have no identity. We have no leaders on the pitch. And we also have no leaders off the pitch. We're a shambles. We're a shambles and we are in crisis. But what I'm going to try and do here, what I'm going to try and do is keep this focused on the team. Let's keep it focused on the team that played against Liverpool because regardless of Todd Bowley and his incompetence, regardless of Egg Barley and his incompetence, regardless of Mauricio Pochettino and his incompetence, regardless of this disastrous takeover from Clear Lake, those 11, 12, 13, 14 players that featured last night should have done better, should have played better. And that was unacceptable. You know, I think that we need to keep it away from anything other than the players. There'll be room, there'll be time to discuss Pochettino, trust me. There'll be time, and we will. But we will do a separate video on that. Let's keep this on the players. Because if you look at the players that we have signed, if you look at Mikhailo Mudrik last night, like, in fact, let's talk about Mudrik. Like, Mudrik is the worst of all of them, isn't he? Mudrik is the jewel in the crown of uselessness. Absolutely horrific. And he is symbolic of this ridiculous strategy that is employed by the owners. But he's not a very good footballer. He contributes virtually nothing on the pitch. He misses sitters. Misses sitters. And look, you will get some very kind, very kind, very generous football commentators. You know, for example, Olivia Bazaglo, incredibly insightful, incredibly erudite, certainly worth listening to. But she's kind. She's kind-hearted. She's generous. So when she speaks about Mikhailo Mudrik, it's done through a prism of, of love and also optimism. I, I don't do that. I'm not there. I can see how bad he is. He is a distinctly poor footballer. He is not fit to play for Chelsea. It has been a total and utter mistake. And Mikhailo Mudrik needs to leave. For 25 million quid, he needs to leave. He is pointless. He is absolutely useless. He's a calamity, a miserable footballer. And let's be totally honest, he is completely and utterly out of his depth in the Premier League. Noni Maruweke. Noni Maruweke. What, what did he do last night? You know, he was totally, wasn't he? He was totally pocketed. He, he contributed almost nothing to the team. I just don't really know what he did does. I don't know what he's supposed to do. I don't really know why we bought him. You know when Unkunku came on? Like, that's the kind of mercurial brilliance that we desire. That's what we need. Like, Unkunku must be looking around thinking, what have I done? This is the worst thing I've ever po- I could have ever done. Signing for Chelsea, I feel sorry for Unkunku. He comes on, he scores a beautiful goal like that. He can't even celebrate. He scores a fantastic goal at Anfield. And the rest of the team is so poor that he cannot even justify celebrating. But, you know, Maduweke, Baddy Ashile last night. Ben Chilwell. You know, when Ben Chilwell came back against Middlesbrough, I thought he did really well. And I think that we need Chilwell to a degree. But last night, it was atrocious. What was his contribution? A dive. A dive and being caught out of possession. You know, in the first three minutes, we must have given the ball away four times. Chilwell playing assists to Liverpool players. It's just totally unacceptable. And... Like, look, Conor Gallagher. I think Conor Gallagher comes in for ridiculous amounts of stick. The vast majority of it totally unjustified. But he didn't have a good game. He should have won a penalty. But I can't even be bothered to focus on that. Because even if Chelsea were awarded two penalties, Liverpool were head and shoulders above us. They were so much better than us. They showed that there is a chasm of quality between us and them. So we can talk about penalties. Say Chelsea have got the two penalties. No Chelsea fan would even dream of trying to convince you that we deserved anything out of the game. Even with the two penalties, we deserved nothing. They were so much better than us. They had so many shots. The only, what, out of, I'd say, three players maybe could hold their heads up high? Petrovic, the jewel in the crown for Chelsea. You know, it's it's just terrible. It it really is. And look, I know, I know that Gallagher didn't have a good game. But the... Issues in the midfield are so much bigger than Conor Gallagher. People focusing on Gallagher, it's not the point. The point is that we have spent a quarter of a billion pounds on two players who cannot play together. It's it's ridiculous. And the game, let's face it, it was over. 
before half time. I couldn't believe it at half time. Mauricio Pochettino actually did something. He actually exercised. He actually did something. Whether it's good or not, I appreciate doing something. Doing something is better than doing nothing, which is what he usually does. But it was so bad that the game was actually over before half time. So he had no choice. You know, he takes off Chilwell. And like I said, his contribution was diving. He takes off Gallagher, who did not play well. And he took off Madueke. Like, what? I mean, Madueke went off. Do you know who the most gutted person to see Madueke go off was? Gomez. Gomez would have been heartbroken. It was the easiest job that Gomez has ever had in his life. You know, it's a, it's a new low for Chelsea, this. It really is. Because it isn't about league position. It isn't about quality. It's about who we are. And it's all under Mauricio Pochettino's watch. I saw a ridiculous stat. You know, not since records began in 2003 have Chelsea faced more efforts on goal in a league match. <laughs> in that same period of time, Chelsea have never before conceded as many as 13 shots on target. Darwin Nunes alone took 11 shots in the game. We took four as an entire team. Darwin Nunes took 11 shots. We took four. And, you know, I just I just don't know where we go. Badi Ashile, you know, 34 million quid. He was embarrassed by Bradley. Bradley was too good for him, time and time again. What about Chelsea's defending for Diogo Jota's goal? Weak, feeble, tepid, defending, dangling a leg out. Smash through. Win the ball. Take the man out. Make sure that Diogo Jota doesn't have the opportunity to bundle through. John Terry sitting in the away end. What would he have done in that circumstance? But there's nobody like that in the team anymore. Just that delicate defending. It really is. It really is pathetic. And, you know, I said the game was over at half time. Could have been worse, really, couldn't it? When you think about how bad it was, it could have been worse. You know, Nunes hit the post, didn't he? He also hit the bar. Oh, dear, oh, dear. It, it's, it's horrific. And I just don't know where we go from here. I found it incredibly frustrating as well when Mauricio Pochettino was talking, sort of suggesting that we're going to win the cup final. Do you know my Chelsea WhatsApp group popping off all week? Tickets for the cup final, tickets for the cup final. Anyone got any spares? Anyone got any spares? Anyone know of any Rowan Ricketts for Wembley? Not a text today. Not one person looking for it. And somehow, somehow, Pochettino's decided to say that we're going to be better at the cup final when he can see us winning it. It's honestly, honestly ludicrous. Look, most teams get overrun at Anfield, I know that. But it's the ease with which it happened. It's the fact that the Liverpool players were just sort of waltzing through our team. No midfield protection for that back line. The back line, fairly average anyway. And basically, the best thing that happened to us was Moises Caicedo going off. I thought Chuck would make it look quite good. And Kunku coming on. Dazzling goal. Really good. You know, we'll never talk about that goal. It's, it'll be a forgotten goal. But, you know, I just don't know what we'll do. The way that Nkunku sort of wriggled past Van Dijk and Canate to beat Alisson. Listen to what we're saying there. Past Van Dijk, past Canate, Alisson. One, two, three of some of the best players in the Premier League at the moment. And that's what he can do. And he's got to play with Mikhailo Mudrik and, and so on. Sickening, to be honest. Absolutely sickening. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I look forward to seeing them.